All right, another UFC fight prediction, UFC 259. We are in now the co-main event, uh, the female featherweight champion of the world, Amanda Nunes, the greatest female fighter of all time, puts the belt on the line once again. Uh, big, big matchup. Megan Anderson is the um, opponent. Aaron, man, a lot to chew right here. Um, you know, Amanda now is a mom. Amanda is the GOAT. Amanda is unbeatable, unstoppable. Megan's been clawing two wins in a row, especially with a nice stoppage in her last fight. Wanting this opportunity. Uh, let's take it away. Let me share them. Let's kind of show the people what we're looking at. Um, so, Megan and Amanda, like, look at those five wins for Amanda in a row, too. They're the best of the best. Um, you know, we're so high on Valentina right now. She's defeated her twice, ran through Cyborg. You know, we thought Felicia would grapple against her. This is incredible run by Amanda Nunes. And I think there's no doubt about it. She is the greatest female fighter in the world. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, and she's still only 32 years old. Um, this is, wow. this is the part that's crazy is that uh, yeah, for some reason, I thought she was 36 or something at this point with how long she's been around and just how much she's accomplished in her UFC career. And even before it, I mean, she had some pretty legitimate accomplishments over in Strike Force. So it's just like, yeah, I mean, she's fought everybody. What she did to Ronda Rousey was as impressive as what Holly Holm did to her. Look um, at that green bar. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, what she did to Holly Holm, I mean, what she did to, I mean, what she's done to pretty much everybody in there, Cyborg, um, you know, I mean, she's looked really impressive. Uh, she looked good against Felicia Spencer, just showed a good overall composed game plan, showed that she doesn't have to go in there and get the finish. Seems her gas tank is improving as she's getting older also, because right. that kind of used to be what I pointed to as a, yeah, she's got the goods, man. But minus 1,200. Let's talk about that. That, that, uh, that is the elephant in the room. Yeah. And so this is what it comes down to. Um, there's an official pick and there's a gambler play. Here. Sure. Uh, my official pick is Amanda Nunes. Uh, I'll, be, I'll keep it real quick. I think it's Amanda Nunes by a decision. I think that uh, she just kind of runs it for five rounds. I don't think she finishes Megan, actually. Um, but if she does – I think it's going to be a submission. Um, and Ooh. so I do, if you're betting Amanda, you got to gamble here in some way or another. Inside the distance, I don't think cuts it down to much better than like minus 500 probably or sure. something, which I just don't love doing a minus 500 prop bet. Like that's a really shitty way to lose your money. Um, so I don't know what Amanda at submission is. Um, you know, maybe I, maybe this is starting to be something I need to look into with my own betting patterns. Cause I did do Gane by submission in his last fight as well. When I kind of saw the obvious being the strikes. Um, but again, Megan is just not, it, she's physically the first legitimate, legitimate 145 er that Amanda's going to face. So that's the first part I want to go to with all due respect to Katz and Ganu, with all due respect to Felicia Spencer I think that the six foot tall, the physicality of Megan could be a real issue. And if she can just keep Amanda at the end of that jab and frustrated, she Megan can hit Amanda from places that Amanda cannot hit her from physically. And Aaron, this is this is where I'm really having a tough time. So yeah, my official pick is Amanda Nunes as well. I've said it a hundred times. You just don't go against these runs. She's the greatest female fighter ever. When she loses, be on the wrong side of that and move on forward and just in a normal fight prediction. But Megan has two losses here in the last six. Holly Holm and Felicia, and I, you can argue, are the two best. So it seems like she beats the fighters who she should be or really close. But when she goes against a Hall of Famer like Holly Holm and one of the best in the division of Felicia, she doesn't get the job done. But let me just go out on the limb here. Let me kind of just put that away, just talking betting-wise a little bit. She's at plus 750 right now. And usually what happens is, and people, every every parlay tree in the world, and probably mine as well, will kind of have Amanda in it. Amanda Islam, and you get a title and, a, and an underdog. You have a nice little run. Yeah. If, if Megan can get to plus 800, plus 850, guys, I'm going to throw money on that side. It's just she has a way to win. 
Uh, she is a big, long, lean, mean, jab, kick, punch, knees. I think she can really uh, have a, a combat fight. I really think it can be a kickboxing fight versus Amanda Nunes. And at that money, it's worth it to throw whatever a unit or a half a unit is just to kind of go for it. You can even have Amanda in some of your parlays and just kind of go out on the limb. If Megan Anderson goes to plus 800, 850, you got to throw money on that angle. But Amanda Nunes... Uh, the greatest female fighter, she's probably what Habib was doing to the lightweight division. You know, Connor had a round. People were picking Gaethje before, you know, that fight went off. No one is picking against Amanda Nunes now. She is probably light years and levels up any other female fighter in the world. Amanda Nunes is my official pick. Yeah, there's there, there's a lot of X factors here, though, that – lead me to being a little bit confused at why the odds makers feel that she's more than double uh, or that she's double right. uh, um, odds to win this fight as she was against Felicia Spencer, Felicia Spencer. She was minus 600. That's more where I see the odds. They should be for this fight. Um, you know, but uh, again, this is Amanda's first fight after being a parent, uh, becoming a parent that can go one of two ways. I think um, there's, you know, but I think well, that a lot less sleep. Trust me, I can tell you from the uh, experience, a lot less sleep. And she's a committed parent too. In all seriousness, yeah. like she, you can tell they both wanted to be parents. Her and Nina, they both have fights though scheduled. So I don't really, I kind of, they're focused. Like they're yeah. not, their feet aren't out the door. I kind of was talking even off air a little bit before. Now I was like, man, what if Amanda's feet are out the door? That's kind of what you have to think in order for Megan to win, though. So it's like right. you kind of got to avoid that 32 versus 31 here. Megan's 31. So it's, you know, and Megan's been submitted by Sydney Dandoy. She was not knocked out by Sydney. She was submitted by Triangle by Sydney Dandoy. Her last two wins are over Zarin Ferran, who is one of the worst fighters I've ever seen in the UFC, um, and Norma Dumont, who – Norma is thick, but that's the only thing I can really say positive about Norma. Um, and right, so and I, like, Glory, Glory Fitness MMA is on a hot ride. Uh, Kraus, I think, will coach her up and have a good game plan. But, hey, uh, you know, I could have Phil Jackson coach me in basketball. I'm not going to beat LeBron James in one-on-one -on -one matchup. He is just more athletic, a better basketball player, stronger, uh, just, you know, quicker, all of the above. Um you know, the more and more we talk about it out loud, it's like, man, you know, it, it, Amanda Nunes, there's a reason why she is, complete, you know, the GOAT yeah. of the female side. Win or lose on this one, she still has that underneath her belt. I think she's still two or three fights away from, um, you know, really wrapping it up. And I can see her. I can see Valentina moving up for one last hurrah. I can see something kind of crazy happening, have one more big last fight if it's a cyborg or, or something. But, uh, you know, I think she's still got a couple more big wins under her belt. And then I think she's got to go back to bantamweight. This is the throw that out there. This is for the featherweight championship. I think her next fight should be in the bantamweight. I don't know if she wants to cut the weight. She needs to drop the title or probably cut the weight because uh, I think this is the end of the featherweight uh, title run right now. It's going to be the end of the featherweight division after this fight. Oh, really I hope not. If, I she hope really not. if she really decimates her, it really could be, man. Because oh, man. it's just like she could just leave that division ruined, say I'm done with 145, and then what? What? You, like then what? You're putting Norma Dumont versus Jermaine Durandamy for a featherweight champion again? Like you're giving Durandamy another illegitimate uh, – Now the, the phenom's title. getting the title. Yeah. The phenom, but, I mean, Felicia Spencer. Well, yeah, of course, we all love Felicia, and, you know, this is not, a, I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but it's like, we know how Dana White looks, and he's like, the assets aren't here, that's why Megan, a Megan Anderson is in this position in the first place, after a win over Norma Dumont and a win over Zarin Farron, or whatever her name is, sorry, Zarin. Yeah, there Farron. it is. Sarah, either way, like, you know, but... Again, I mean, things happen. Uh, Megan, I, Megan was probably a pretty decent favor or underdog against Kat Zingano. To toenail across the eye, all of a sudden the fight's over. Megan gets the win. Like, so it's like these things happen. It's a gamble, though. Uh, and actually, honestly, in all honesty, um, after talking it through with you, um, it's really hard for me to see, uh, yeah. other than a shocking KO, how Megan wins this fight. What is your official pick? What my round? Official, my official pick is going to be a round two submission for Amanda Nunes. 
Wow. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to push it further. I think it's going to be a round four or even round five. And sometimes it's hard to get a round five stoppage. I just think she started. Amanda Nunes doesn't want to maybe go to a decision again, uh, plays it safe, plays it smart, and then round four really turns it up and sees the opening, gets the finish around four, uh, probably TKO, and maybe even a round five, which will be major money. Uh, that might be a prop that I might throw a little shekel on. But I see a round four, round five finish, TKO, Amanda Nunes. Yeah, I mean, she's done it before. She, uh, you know, had a round five finish against Raquel Pennington, a girl who did not belong in there with her, but hung in there for the first few rounds. But eventually the cream separates from the crop. And there we go. That is a great fight prediction. UFC 259. Don't miss it. Saturday night, co-main event, Amanda Nunes, Megan Anderson for the UFC Female Featherweight Championship. Aaron, man, appreciate your time, dude. Peace.